Okay, this is number four in Spiritual Retards. This is a cap I bought at the local store. John 3.16 Very clear in translation. It's only slightly mistranslated. And it says, you believe and you get God's life. In the Greek it's very clear that the two happen at the same time. But that's even clear in the English. And millions of people have read this verse have believed and have been saved that moment because when they read it they recognize that's what it means so that's why they believe now that's common sense because if Christ had to come and pay then all you can do is believe in him believe is something you do about something else or someone else that's all there is it's what something else or someone else is or does that you believe. There's nothing about you. It's about the object. The merit of the object. That's really clear. Okay? If I believe in you, it's you I believe in. I'm not thinking of me. I'm thinking of you. Okay, so how retarded is it for the centuries and centuries and centuries that have gone by this very clear verse is negated, denied, distorted. Oh, you have to have, you have a head belief, but not a heart belief. Hello, the heart doesn't believe anything. The heart pumps blood. Okay? Emotion is not believing either. Emotion is a thing in your body, your body feels. Only your soul can believe. The soul is the real you. Believe, 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 believe. No other verbs. Not baptize, not invite, not confess your faith aloud. All those things that people misuse in the Bible are because they're retarded and they don't actually read the Bible. All right? In a lot of cases, like Romans 10.10, 10, it's a mistranslation because it was translated by a spiritual retard. Okay? John 3.16. Believe and you're saved. That's it. Then you can go back to being an axe murderer or an atheist or whatever you want. You'll get punished, of course. But you're going to be saved because Christ said, Whosoever believes will be saved. Okay? Now, 2,000 years that verse has been around. 2,000 years Christianity has been distorting it. Not only that, but they've been distorting a lot of other things. So I thought I'd make a list of the ten biggest retarded things that Christianity says that I could come up with. There are more than ten, of course. <laughs> but these ten should alert you to how retarded Christianity is. And it really needs to get out of the theological playpen, but it won't. Because it wasn't out of the theological playpen in the first century. The Jerusalem Christians in Acts 15 were going back to the Mosaic Law. So they didn't understand what the Lord said in their own generation. Okay? It's, this is the same thing as Genesis 15.6. Look it up. Abraham believed in the Lord and it was credited to his account as God's righteousness. God's righteousness. God's life. That's why you get God's life because you get God's righteousness. That's also 2 Corinthians 5.21. Look it up. Now, so the first retarded thing that Christianity says, number one on the list, is that you must do some other verb besides believe to be saved. And depending on how idiotic they are, they come up with whatever verb they want. Like some say, oh, you have to repent of sin. There's not a single Bible verse that says that. There, there is the word repent, but repent means to change your mind, and it's never saying it with sin. I did videos on that. Go look it up in my basic Bible videos playlist. All right? It doesn't say repent of sin anywhere, and nor does this verse say repent of sin. Okay? Believe is the only verb in this verse. Okay? After that comes the word have eternal life. 
after. So number one stupidity in Christianity is you must be baptized or invite Christ into your dirty little heart or your dirty little life and preen over how good you were because you did that. Or they come up with other verbs like you have to you have to say aloud that you believe in Christ in order to be saved. But you're going to add to the work of the cross? Come on. That's number one stupidity in Christianity. It's been going on for 2,000 years. And yeah, the Catholics are the ones that invented all these stupidities. But you know what? We Protestants are continuing them. So let's stop blaming the Catholics. Number two on the list, therefore, just as stupid, is the claim that, you, oh, you can lose your salvation if you sin some big, great big sin. Oh, you were never saved in the first place. Did anybody read the story of David? David murdered, he committed adultery, okay? Uh, David was the guy to whom God granted 3,000 year blessing time grants. That's why Christ could come. I spent a lot of time on that in my God Orchestrates Time video with all the web pages that are in that video description. Okay, and we all know that Christ came from David, and we all know the verses that say that, that God says that David is a man after God's own heart. That was after David did the thing with Bathsheba. And Christ came from the line of David and Bathsheba through Nathan. Okay, that's the, the crossover to Shealtiel after the Jeconiah curse. All right. And Solomon was the son of, Sheba, of Bathsheba and David. So let's stop. Let's start reading our Bible for change, okay? So no, you cannot lose your salvation, dummy. Okay, number three, stupidity, retarded stupidity in Christianity. I mean, you should know that these are retarded things. If God had to come and do it in the first place, then there was nothing you could do. Okay. Okay, number three. Oh, I love this one. You must evidence fruit in order to prove that you're a Christian. Yeah, and the people saying that are fruitcakes because the fruits passage that they're quoting is in Matthew 7. By their fruits you shall know them. Does anybody ever bother to read the context that the Lord is talking about? He's talking about teachers and their doctrines. By the fruits of their doctrines you shall know them. Yeah, and by the fruits of Christianity's doctrines, we know that Christians are fruitcakes since the, the first century. So, uh, if I were you, I'd stop quoting that verse because you prove that you don't know how to read the Bible when you quote it. Um, here's another one. Oh, you have to feel the Holy Spirit. Really? Can you feel God? Can you, you know, what does the atheist always say? What does the atheist always say? Oh, I have no proof of God. I can't feel Him. I can't touch Him. I can't taste Him. Yeah, well, then you can't feel the Holy Spirit either. Dummy! Because the Holy Spirit is God. Dummy! So, what is the feeling of the Spirit? It's a feeling with understanding and perception. Because you can't feel what's infinite. Feeling belongs to the body. My, I can feel my hands and fingers. I can feel food. I can feel my hair. I can feel my, this baseball cap. God is not finite, so I can't feel him. Duh. 